I'm with Salim Zidane, the director of the House of Hope here in Bethlehem. Now, Salim, what is the House of Hope? Yeah, good morning. House of Hope is established in 1963 for blind people, kids. And in 1986, they mixed blind and special need kids together. We work under the umbrella of the church. Uh, so this year, you're celebrating 60 years since the House of Hope was started. How was it actually started? Yeah, we think this year it make a big celebration for the 60 years for started the House of Hope. But because the situation war, we change it to next year. We hope next year is a peace in all the world, not in Palestine and we need, we need to pray to make a good celebration next year. Mm. And it was Auntie May who started the house, wasn't it? Yeah, Sister May, she started the House of Hope. She rented a house in, in Bejala and she take care with the many blind girls. And she pray for her own house. And God give him this house where we live now. And she's a believer. She's a good lady. I think about that. Thanks God for Miss May. Now, the amazing thing was she was actually blind as well, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's blind. Yeah. She, she's from Lod near Tel Aviv. Yeah, yeah she born there. And she was able to establish this great building here. Yeah, she buy an old house here in Bejala. And after that, they built a house for the girls and a new kitchen. And they built a small guest house and workshop for the blind the kids to make brooms. And the special need, they make olive wood. And today you're still making brooms, aren't you, in the workshop? Yeah, we still make brooms. But, you know, it's a difficult situation here in Palestine. And they buy the brooms from China and Turkish, cheaper than we do it. Yeah. How many residents do you look after here today? And are they all blind? Now we have 12 kids and four people stay here, employee stay here blind. Miss Violet, Ahmad, Sami and Murad and 12 kids. Two people who remember Auntie May is Miss Violet and Sami Badra. Let's find out what they have to say about Auntie May. I'm with Miss Violet, who is a teacher here at the House of Hope, and she's also blind herself. When did you first come to the House of Hope, Miss Violet? I came to the House of Hope in the 70s. I came to study. I finished high school at the Swedish Good Shepherd School. And then after that, I went to Bethlehem University. I had my degree in English literature minor in education and I've been teaching at the House of Hope since 1993 teaching the blind boys but I used to always come and help with the blind boys before after the graduating from university. Wow so do you remember Auntie May and yeah. do you have some stories about her? Yeah of course I came to the House of Hope and Auntie May was here and she is the one who started the House of Hope. She started with blind boys. They used to live at the House of Hope. They used to rent places and, and then the Lord blessed the work and gave them this property where we live now. And Auntie May always told us many stories about how the Lord was faithful to them he was always providing for them in times of need. Many times they used to be in great need and always the Lord was faithful. She used to always tell us the Lord will not leave you nor forsake you. She was just trust the Lord and she always trusted the Lord. And one of her favorite the hymns was, what a friend we have in Jesus. He to always tell us, he is your best friend in times of need. So trust the Lord and he 
will not leave you nor forsake you. So she was really a very godly woman. She was faithful. She used to always trust the Lord and always she told the people who used to help her at the House of Hope, never refuse any blind person who comes to stay at the House of Hope. No. And that was really her vision to help the blind and to have a home for them. So I really see she was really very faithful to the work for the blind here at the House of Hope. Was this something that was very unusual for a blind person here in Bethlehem to start a home for blind children? I think it was before uh, she started, there was a home for the blind girls. It was uh, where the Bible College now is. It used to be a school for the blind, for the girls, and then uh, she started for the boys. But would you expect a blind person to be able to do this? Was this something that was unusual in the community? It was, yeah, really amazing because, yeah, she had uh, uh, Michael, who was the uh, director later on, uh, and his mother, mm. she used to help her as a family, helped her a lot in, you know, running the work. And it was wonderful because, you know, many of the people who used to come and visit, especially volunteers, used to appreciate her work and used to like to support her and encourage the work. So she was a great role model for yeah. vision and for prayer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She was really a woman of prayer. She always used to have devotion with us every evening for everybody, the children, the adults. She used to have many blind boys who were at high school. Some of them went to college. Some of the ladies used to work in local factories here in the area and always used to provide everything for them, a place to stay and food and everything. And she used to pray for us every evening and used to go even to her room, talk with her, chat. You feel like she's a mother. Not really, uh, like, it, you know, we never felt there was a, uh, like she's a boss. Or, no, we always felt she's a mother. She was so nice and so loving and caring. Yeah. Okay, well, Miss Violet, thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, welcome. I'm with Sami Badra here at the House of Hope. Now, Sami, when did you come to work at the House of Hope? I came to work here in uh, 1990. I started to work here. And how old were you when you came to work here? About 26, something like that. Yeah. And did you get the chance to meet Auntie May? Of course, yeah, yeah. And what kind of lady was she? Well, I can say that she's a wonderful lady, understandable lady, very, very... And all people here loved her, you know. Uh, was she like a mother to all the people here? Yes, yes. And... Uh, she wasn't, you know, that one who judged people quickly, you know, and uh, she always give a chances to people, even if she was blind lady, you know. She was giving chances to people. And her faith is a really big faith, you know, big. I learned from her a lot. And can you tell me, like, a couple of stories about what she was like and what it was like working with her? Well, I can tell that one time the, the home, that was in 1991, something like that the home was very in need and no money and the war uh, the gulf war and everything blocked here and the home was in need and the electric company was wanted to, to cut off the electric because no money the telephone and the water company also they no water no money and always she has a faith and she told us to come to her room every morning to pray for the home and we used to come all to to pray for one hour, something like that. And one day, she said to me, Sammy, I went to her room and she said, Sammy, can you go out, look around, maybe somebody will come, you know, you will come. So I said, I said okay, I, I went out here, I went to see if there's anything, no strange people to come or something. And then I, I sat down on the entrance of the home. One lady, she came. And she passed the home two, three times and looked at the car, house of hope, house of hope, house of hope. And she too went two, three times. And then I wasn't know that very well English, you know. Uh, and she was like a foreign lady. I said to her something, yes, what you want something like that, you know. 
She told me, what is this home like that? I couldn't talk to her. I brought her down to the room where they pray. You know, I said to her, welcome, come in. And then she came in. They told her about the home and she was happy to hear about it. And then in one time that I saw that in my eyes, she put her hand in her bag. She took a check. She handed it to Auntie May and Auntie May handed it to the director of the home that time, uh, Michael David and he read it for her the money was enough and more than what we need you know wow. and uh, that's her faith you know so uh, that's one of the stories the other stories because she has a big faith and that's i test that in my life you know because every morning she used to call me come up six half past six in the morning pray with her me and her mm. who i am i am little man little one so to ask me to come and pray with her I used to come up to see her up past six in the morning for five, ten minutes to pray with her. And, and what happened in that time that we need workers, we don't have money. And always the director, when there is no money, they don't bring workers, you know. Mm-hmm. Because we used to have 50 kids here, 40 kids here, and boys and girls. And we need somebody to help with the old bee ladies, with the people here. We used to have around 90 people who come and live and come every day to the home, you see. And then the director went to see her with me. I, I went with him and he told her we need, we need workers, but we don't have money, you know. And she said to him, bring uh, workers, bring workers. She said, but no money, no money, you know, no. bring uh, workers, bring workers. And he brought two workers to work here. After a month, it's like a miracle, you know, and God blessed the home. The money was there? And the money was there. Mm. And we used to have volunteers, and volunteers helped with the money, you know, also. They write to their churches, they write to their, you know, that's why it's important to, to have volunteers, you know, for the home, and to have Christian people to live and to work here. Did Auntie May change people's lives and did she see the residents come to the Lord as well? Some of them come to the Lord? Yeah, she actually she helped me change my life, me personally, you know. I, I was like a new Christian, you know, new believer, you know. And I still wasn't know about the faith. What is the faith? You know, and that's how she helped me personally, you know. And she helped volunteers faith. Volunteers used to come here, they learned from her and they loved her. And the kids, the boys like Jafar and Isa, they loved her, these boys. And every day she used to bring them to her home, to her room, to sing for her and to sing with her. She loved their singing, yeah. Wow. Okay, Sammy, thank you very much. God bless you, Paul, thank you. And now back to Salim. Now, Salim, what is the average day like at the House of Hope for the residents? We start at eight with devotion, we songs, we speak in, in the Bible and we pray. And after that, the students go to the classes. At 10, we have break, snack. They return at 10.30 to the classes. At 12.30, there is a lunch until 1 and return back to the classes until 2. After that, they have activities, stay in the hall, they see TV. And at 6.30, we have we eat supper and they sleep. And they still have a connection with their families as well, don't they? They still get the chance to go home. Yeah. Kids, in the end of every month, they go home to see the families for three days. But now they stay here three months because the way is closed because of the war. All the kids stay here for three months. But they're going home tomorrow, aren't they, for, for Christmas yeah, time? Yeah, we hope tomorrow to go to, to see the families. If the <laughs> way is, is open, it's difficult to go. But, you know, this is Christmas time. The staff need to... To have a rest, to sit with the family, and the students like to sit with the family too. Now Christmas is coming soon. Do they love Christmas? Yeah. Here in House of Hope, we live at Christmas. We start to sing Christmas songs in the 1st of December, and we pray for peace, and we pray for the Jesus Christ to make a peace in our land in this time, in Christmas time. And we make a Christmas tree, and today we have a gifts for the student, Christmas gifts, and we make a small party, and tomorrow we go home. 
I bet they're very excited. Yeah. At this time of the year, will you hear them singing the Christmas carols round the home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day in the morning, noon, during the day, we sing Christmas carol, Christmas songs, and we are happy. We are happy because <laughs> Jesus is our salvation. And we pray, again, I tell you, we pray for peace, to live for peace. All the nations in all the world, we like peace. Now, in Bethlehem, the Christian families, are they going to be celebrating Christmas this year or is it a very difficult time because of the war? I think most of the families is not celebrating Christmas for two reasons. First, there is many killed for small uh, in the war, for a child. And the other things is most of the people, it's not work. We don't have money. They don't go work to Israel. The Palestinian Authority don't give the salaries for the, the employees. Uh, no money. And everything is high. The, the food, vegetables, food, everything, petrol, solar, everything is high. Electricity, water, and the people don't have money. So has the war really affected Bethlehem as well as Gaza? Yeah. Checkpoint is closed between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. And Bethlehem area is lived by the tourists. We have many hotels, we have many souvenirs, we have many restaurants for the tourism. And I think 75 people from Bethlehem work in the hotels and restaurants and souvenirs. And now it's stopped. That's 75%? Yeah. Now you said the checkpoint is closed. Why does the checkpoint affect Bethlehem? Yeah, checkpoint is closed because the Israelis didn't give permission to the worker to go to Israel to work. Mm. It's closed. So you have many, many workers in Bethlehem go yeah. and work in Israel, so they yeah, haven't worked yeah. for a long time. Yeah, many, many, many people w go to work in, in Israel mm. and now is, is stay home. Mm. And now you're part of the scouts. Will the scouts be celebrating as normal this year on the 24th of December? Usually they march in the city yeah. with their musical instruments. Yeah. Is that going to be happening this year? No. Yesterday I talked with the, some of the leaders in Bethlehem, scout leaders in Bethlehem, after tomorrow, in Friday, there is a meeting for the leaders in Bethlehem area. And they think this year the scout is celebrate, but without the music. Mm. Just walk from old Bethlehem to Nativity Church. Mm. Just walk with the uniform, scout uniform, and they have signs to write for a piece, something for peace, and some scriptures from the Bible. Is that very sad for you that you can't be praising the Lord in this difficult time? Yeah, yeah. It's sad for me because this time people happy from December start. They go to the shops, they buy something, they put Santa, they put lamps, light. The street is it's happy. They put many, many things. And today, now is nothing. So that there's no Christmas tree and there's no lights? No Christmas tree, no lights, nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. No anythings. What is your prayer finally for this year? And what's your prayer for the 60th anniversary of the House of Hope? Yeah. First, I pray, always I pray for peace. And I thank God for House of Hope. We pray to God give us strength to continue to help this kind of this people, the plant people and special need, because the families don't need it at home. The first home for this people is House of Hope. We pray to God to help us to continue to help this people. And we pray to God give us money <laughs> to continue to, to work. We pay, we pay food, we pay electricity, water, transportation, many, many, many things we pay. We, we. Uh, what is your Facebook page for people who'd like to know more about the work that you do? Yeah, House of Hope. Facebook, House of Hope. Just House of Hope. And the email, it's info at hohbethlehem.org. Okay, Salim, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank for you.